Hey, hey developers, so today we are looking at Vuex. We are gonna take an existing Vuex application and we're gonna refactor it. So I'm gonna show you some quick tips and tricks to take a Vuex app and make it a little bit better. Hey, and if you don't know what Vuex is, basically if you're in Vue.js, it's the Vuex is the state management system for Vue.js. It allows us to share information between our whole app. So we're gonna go ahead and deep dive into that. And if you guys like these type of videos, make sure you smash that like button and leave a comment below and agree with me or disagree with me if you don't like how I'm refactoring this. And also one more quick plug, I do have a Vue.js course that I'm creating. I put a link in the description below. If you wanna get a free cheat sheet, go ahead and click on it. You can put your email in and I'll notify you when the course is available. Okay, so let's go ahead and just jump right into it. We have a very simple app here. So what I did is I've been doing code reviews. I've been looking at other apps and I thought maybe I would show uh, one way of making this app a little bit better. But before we begin, I wanna have a little caveat that when you're creating apps in the wild, you don't always need to use Vuex. Just like if you're creating a React app, there's something called Redux. You don't always need Redux either. That's another state management system. So we're gonna assume that this very simple example is maybe a part of a much larger application that we're in production and that is just not a simple example app. There is one kind of thing that you always keep in mind whenever you're creating applications and that is the KISS principle or keep it simple stupid. So if there's any way that you're refactoring code and you make it more complex or you make it harder to understand, there's kind of a disproportionate amount of problems you get with that by doing that. So in other words, don't just try to refactor things to be clever, make sure it makes sense. And you can, you'll find out as your career goes on that you'll know when it's time to make to refactor it to make it more sense and when it's time to not refactor it and just keep it, you know, keep it a little bit more simpler. But in this case, we're going to assume that this is a part of a bigger application and that we want to do a few tweaks to this. And of course, leave a comment below if you agree or disagree with any of these things. So first off, uh, we are starting off the very simplest of simplest apps. If you've been following this channel for a while, thank you very much, by the way. Uh, you notice I a lot of times use this really simple counter example where you click a button and it updates a counter. So this is the latest view app right here. I'm just using the, the normal view options API here. No, no, no view three or anything. And you can see what I'm doing. I have a view store here. And in the store, I have a state counter. I have this set counter as a mutation. I don't have any actions right now. And I have a getter called get counter. So in other words, all this does is I have this counter data, I have this set counter and it just takes whatever the payload is and it adds it to the state.counter and I have a get counter which uh, returns the state. So it's very simple. Now if I look at my home component, I have my counter here, this hello world, this counter here, and when you click on it, it increment, it has this method right here that increments, this has this store.commit and it just adds one to counter and then I'm setting this counter and counter is actually grabbing it from a data. So I have a local variable in this component called counter. So first off, you know, pause the video for a second and see if you can think of some ways you can refactor this to make this better. Okay, you're back. Thank you for coming back and sticking with the video. So first thing that comes to mind with me, there's a few things we can do, but I'm gonna do some kind of fun here. Instead of having the set counter, I'm gonna set, set these to ES6 arrow functions. I think it just looks a little nicer. Probably something maybe you didn't think of right away, but why not? So what you basically make it is an object and we're going to go like this. And so now we have an object and we have an arrow function and we just need to get rid of a few things. There we go. And now it's still working. So that's one thing and we can do the same thing with get counter. I'm gonna do the ES6 arrow function, get rid of this, get rid of this get rid of that. And by the way, I'm going to delete the return because we don't need that and the semicolon and cool. So now we have it just a little bit nicer. You know, it's just in one line and you can still see here it's still working. There's no errors. Uh, so you don't see any errors, right? Yep. You can see it. Okay. So that's the first thing I wanted to do. Just a little, really quick ES6 refactor. I kind of like ES6. I like the arrow functions makes it a little nicer. Now, if you're using complex actions and if it's more complicated, probably don't need to do this, but I kind of like it this way. And now if you go back to the home component, you're thinking why this should have stood out for you. For those of you who know Vuex 
is why are we using another counter here? So what we're mounting, basically what we're doing is we're mounting the component and then we're grabbing the stuff out of the getters and adding it to counter. So what would be a better way of doing that? So uh, the one way that would make sense to me is you can create a computed property called counter. So instead of having this, we'll do something called computed here and we'll name, we'll name it counter and we'll delete this data object right now. And now we can just return something out of the computer property. And the nice thing about computed properties inside view, uh, they are, um, they'll return when anything inside the computer property changes and they're also cached. So we can do something like this. We'll do this dot store dot getters dot get counter. Cool. And then in this case, I don't need to actually explicitly have a counter and set it. And now this counter right here will be essentially the same thing we have to see here. So let's see if we save it. And then we can actually get rid of this one as well. We'll delete it and we'll refresh it. Make sure we don't have any errors. Cool, and still working as we expected. So now we've kind of cleaned it up a little bit. We no longer, we don't even need this mounted component at all. We don't even need components. So yeah, it's a little bit cleaner, it's a little nicer. Okay, so that's one way of doing it. Uh, another way is you can say this dot counter plus one. This is not going to work any longer. So one thing we can do, if all we're just doing is incrementing it by one, I can just go into the store dot commit and I can go into here and instead of doing store a state dot counter equals payload, I could just do state dot counter dot plus plus and then get rid of the payload here and have it refresh. Cool, it's still working. So now it's just incrementing by one, but we don't have to necessarily add the payload in there. We can add that back in if we want. Uh, otherwise we could, we could still send the payload over, but we might have to grab the counter first and then increment it, um, this dot counter plus plus like I had, but I don't know, I think just refactoring it like that, that just makes more sense to me. One thing you may notice too, is we're using these kind of strings everywhere. We have this set counter here, we have get counter here, and we have uh, we have set counter here and get counter here. And you can imagine as the app grows that we're gonna have a lot of these different types everywhere. And if you actually look at the official documentation, it mentions that a commonly seen pattern is to use constants for mutations, types, and various flux implementations. This allows the code to take advantage of tooling like linters and putting all constants in a single file I use your allows you to collaborate to get an at a glance view of what mutations are possible in the entire application. So this might be something we wanna do. So let's do that. So let's create a new uh, file, we'll call it mutation types.js. And then we can basically export const um, set counter and we'll have it equal set counter. Cool, so now we can use it. We can also use get counter if we want. Um, maybe not just for mutation, but for getters too. Maybe we'd want to create a new getter.types.js file, but just for the heck of it, I'll just use the same file here. So we have a get counter and a set counter, and now we can change this in our actual store to use these mutation types. So to do that, you would first have to import them in. So we can import in get counter and set counter from, and then we know it's dot mutation types. And then we just have to use them inside our application here. We can do get, this will be set counter, and then this will be get counter. And now we can use them elsewhere. So let's go back into our home view and instead of doing this commit here, we can actually import it like this. We can import, actually I'll just quicken up. I'll, I'll copy and paste this. And instead I'll change where this is coming from. So remember when you're using view, you can use the at symbol and that's basically the source, basically the source folder. So I can do slash um, at slash store mutation types. And then in this commit, I'm going to just delete this all out and put in the set counter. And for getters, you can see here, I have get counter here, but 
it's an object basically, I can do git counter. And let me delete this extra import. Okay, I got no errors. Let's see if it works. Refresh it, make sure it refreshed. Cool, it's still working as we expected. So now we're using this special git counter and set counter. And you could do this for all sorts of types. So if you have other actions, you can make multiple files, or you can put them all on one file, all your different files. And then whenever in whenever you're inside a uh, inside a component and you're trying to think of I need to do an action or a commit, um, then you know I could just use set counter or git counter. And you don't have to necessarily remember the exact names. You can look in one file and you'll have them all listed, or maybe a couple files. And then you'll have to look through the whole store. So that's that's one thing. Uh, you're probably thinking too, this is a very simple example, but what happens if this has a whole bunch of things that we're doing? It? Maybe we have multiple getters, multiple setters. Well, there's a way we can make this better. We can actually use what are called Vuex helpers. And so let's see if we can refactor this to use Vuex helpers. Now uh, for commit, um, so we have some mutations and some getters. So let's try getters first. So there's something called map getters. You can grab that from Vuex. So let's try map getters. So we can do map getters here. And I'm gonna make it an object. There's a couple of ways we can do it, but this object will be good because we wanna call it counter. And then we can put in the name of what we want to grab. So in this case, we're gonna call it git counter. And I'll make sure this one is all commented out. And let's see if it still works as it's supposed to. So I'm refreshing it. Cool, so I'm using the git counter. It's working, by the way, inside here, you could see the mutations. If you click on, I have the view ex, uh, Chrome extension. You could see every time I'm clicking it, the set counter is getting set and I could see it working. So let me refresh it here. So there it goes. It takes a second to upgrade, update, but you see it says four there. So we know that our git counters is working. Now we can do the same thing with our mutations. So we do have a map mutations and the map mutations would be uh, in our methods. So we do dot, dot, dot map mutations. Once again, I'm going to use an object here because I want to use increment and our increment is going to set this counter here to uh, set counter. And I'm going to do that. So let's see if it still works. Look at our console. Cool, so our set counter, our map mutations is basically the same as set counter here. And so every time we do our increment, our increment, it's essentially doing the same thing as doing this dot increment like this without sending any sort of payload or anything to it. That's automatically setting our increment and it's incrementing as we expect it. So now we have a much cleaner app. Uh, that uh, you know works really well. So that that's all I wanted to say for you guys today. I think this is a little bit cleaner. Now we have our mutations all in one place. We are using the Vuex helpers, the map getters, the map mutations, and everything's hooked up. And then in, also in our store, we are using our mutations. We're using arrow functions. I think it looks a little better. Let me know in the comments below if you agree or disagree. I appreciate it. Thanks.